بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So this is a continuation of the first part of talking about the preservation of the Quran and addressing those uh, claims about uh, the Quran and how it was preserved and about those um, corrections in early Quran manuscripts. So the example I was giving. Um, we'll continue where we left off in the first part. The example I was giving was about Sulh Hudaybiyah, the uh, Treaty of Hudaybiyah the Prophet uh, did with the Mushrikeen, and he was, uh, you know, telling his uh, Ali radiallahu anhu, who was his scribe. So Ali knew how to write, and so he was his scribe, and he uh, told him, you know, this is what Muhammad Rasulullah, you know, is agreeing upon. So the Mushrikeen said. You know, don't write Rasulullah. If we knew that you are the Messenger of Allah, we wouldn't have been fighting you. Um, so the Prophet ﷺ told Ali, wipe it out. Wipe it out. And here's the, the, the you know, uh, it's, a, it's a long narration, it's authentic narration. But here's the point that I, I'm bringing this up for. The Prophet ﷺ told Ali to wipe it out. And Ali didn't want to wipe it. So the Prophet ﷺ asked, you know, um, where it is and he wiped it out with his own hand. So this is an example of Ali wrote something and the Prophet ﷺ told him to wipe it out because they wanted to make that change because the Mushrikeen is saying, hey, don't write Rasulullah, write, you know, uh, Muhammad uh, bin Abdullah. Don't write Rasulullah because we don't know that you're the Messenger of Allah. Don't write Muhammad Rasulullah, write Muhammad bin Abdullah. Uh, you know, and so the Prophet ﷺ wiped it out on that manuscript, wiped Rasulullah out to write, um, you know, to, to take it out and write Muhammad uh, bin Abdullah um, to show um, you know what they're to mention the things that the conditions that he's agreeing with the Muslims and the Prophet ﷺ were agreeing with the Mushrikeen upon in that treaty of uh, Hudaybiyah. The point of this is to show that the Prophet ﷺ wiped out those two words and they were uh, changed or corrected. Now this is not a manuscript of the Quran but this shows that how you know this isn't something new. Uh, corrections or changes in a manuscript isn't something new. When you want to, when you're writing something, you want to change something, or you uh, made a mistake in something, or whatever it may be, you simply wipe it out, cross it out, and you rewrite it. Um, you know that's that's not something new. That's not a, a, such a discovery as they're trying to claim and show. Oh, look at a huge discovery that the Quran was changed. And so this is what, what happens when people are writing anything down. Mis mistakes are corrected. Mistakes are corrected. The author himself, that professor, Dan Brubaker, who authored that book, he says that these could be scribal errors. These corrections in these Quran man manuscripts could be a scribe who's copying the Quran, who made an error and went back and corrected afterwards. And, um, and this is exactly what, what um, these are. You know, it, it's even an example. I mean, I'll give you an example. In a school setting, for example, if I go and take a, a student's notebook and open it up, I'll see the student copying down, you know, having copied down notes from the teachers, you know, from the board, whatever the teacher has written down or what the teacher has said. And sometimes you'll see that the student crossed something out, you know, blotted something out and rewrote it. They have a mistake, whatever. They might have corrected it. So if anything, this shows these corrections in these manuscripts shows the extent of care that the Muslims took when learning and copying the Qur'an. You know, catching the mistakes and correcting them when copying them and write, writing down the Qur'an is, is a good thing. It's a good thing that they, 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 they're uh, making these corrections. That's something good. That's not something bad, if anything. And, you know, the, the most important point to mention really is that the Qur'an was learned and passed down orally, verbally, not written down. That's not how it was preserved. That's not, not how it was passed down. That, that's not how it was learned. And, um, you know, the compiled physical books that we have of the Qur'an, the actual printed copies of the Qur'an, is something extra that we have. It's something extra. Um, for the people who don't have the Qur'an memorized, they can read from it. Uh, or, you know, but the reality of it is, that's not how it was preserved. That's not how it was learned. That's not how it was taught. That's not how it was passed down and up until this day and until, until the day of judgment. You know, if, if we, hypothetically speaking, if all the printed Qur'ans in the world today they disappear, or they're lost, or they're physically changed. Someone comes and they make a change in every single copy, which isn't even possible today. But let's let's hypothetically say 
someone makes a copy, uh, a change in every single copy of the Qur'an today. We would still have the original Qur'an preserved in the hearts and minds of thousands, if not millions of Muslims around the world. That is how the Qur'an is preserved. Not in the physical copy of the book, but rather in the hearts and minds of the Muslims around the world who have the Qur'an memorized. That is what we mean by the Qur'an can be changed. When you say the Qur'an can be changed, it's not that someone can't come and bring a physical copy of the Qur'an, a printed copy, and, and uh, cross something out, change something, blot something out. That's not what we mean. That's some, like someone could do that. That doesn't mean they changed the Qur'an, because the Qur'an that is preserved in the hearts and minds of thousands, again, tens of, if not hundreds of thousands, or even millions of Muslims around the world, that is what won't change. Any changes that someone might make in a physical copy won't be passed down won't be you know in incorporated into the Quran won't be passed down because those mistakes are you know will clearly stand out will be obvious um, to the people who have the Quran memorized by heart whether these mistakes are intentional you know if someone makes a mistake you know whether in the past in, in any of those manuscripts or even today writing down the Quran those mistakes won't be incorporated in the Quran won't be preserved or passed down because clearly they'll be identified as mistakes and they'll stand out and they'll be caught because you have so many people who have the Quran memorized by heart so they'll be able to catch those those mistakes that's what we mean by the Quran you know can be changed it's preserved when Allah says in the Quran that he will set it down and he'll preserve it that's what Allah is talking about preserving it through the so many Muslims in every generation from the time of Prophet Muhammad until today and every generation there's so many Muslims that have the Quran memorized by heart and that is how it was preserved they learned it this way orally and they passed it down to their students orally as well it was all done orally and it's not the physical printed copy that we talk about that was copied down and written is what we talk about um, uh, to give you an example, let's say I'm teaching a, a young kid Surah Al-Fatiha, I'm, I'm saying it to them and they're copying it down, or even they're copying it down from a printed copy of the Qur'an, they might make a mistake in copying it, right? They might make a mistake. They're human. Humans make mistakes. Scribes, people copying things down, might make a mistake. And if I come and see to verify what they have written down, I might, if I see a mistake, I'll point it out, say, oh, no, this is wrong, cross it out. You know, I know because I have Surah Fatiha memorized by heart. So if someone makes a mistake writing it down or even reciting it back to me, I would correct them. Say, no, it's not that, it's this, repeat after me. And we do that all the time. That's how people learn the Qur'an from a teacher. And, and if they make mistakes, it's the teacher who corrects them. Otherwise, even reading from a book, if someone just picks up a book and tries to, um, to read the Qur'an, they might not know how to... Even if the words are there, they might not know how to read it or pronounce it correctly. So even the pronunciation, the way it's recited is preserved as well. The way it's recited and pronounced, the words are, are said, is preserved as well. And not just the words themselves. The words themselves, but also the way it, they're pronounced and recited as well, um, have been preserved. SubhanAllah, I mean, the Qur'an is an amazing book. It's an amazing book full of miracles, full of guidance. And SubhanAllah, some people are afraid... They're afraid of it because it, um, you know, because of the guidance that it brings, because of the truth that it, is, it establishes, because of the strong arguments that it presents, because of all the miracles that are clear and evident in it, because of so many people who read the Quran and accept uh, 